Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to the fifth annual Town Hall with Dave Soleil. My name is Caitlin Hennessy, and I'm the Program Coordinator at Global Connections. And here at Global Connections, we provide co- and extracurricular programming for online students wherever you have an internet connection. And during tonight's conversation, the Vice President of Academic Outreach and Innovation, which includes Global Campus, will offer his insights about Global Campus and answer your questions. We've received um, some questions tonight already, but please use the chat box throughout the evening to type in additional questions. And to keep tonight's conversation productive, please be conscious of the following guidelines. Um, Dave is here tonight to address your questions, thoughts, concerns about issues that impact all Global Camp students. We'll stay here as long as you have questions or items that you'd like to discuss. And when raising a comment or question, please do not use an individual name, including professors, peers, or staff. If you do have an issue with a specific individual, please bring that concern to your advisor or Debbie O'Donnell of Student Services. Um, please be mindful of the Cougar tradition of using respectful language. And if you have any IT issues, please type them into the chat box and uh, we'll do your, our best to help you. All right, thank you all so much for coming tonight. And I'm going to turn it over to Dave. I'm so glad you could uh, uh, come, to, come together tonight uh, to have this conversation. Um, as Caitlin mentioned, you know, this is an opportunity for you to ask questions, uh, provide uh, suggestions on how we might improve the global campus. You know, we've come so far from, from where we started back in, in 1992 uh, of how we, we connected uh, students to WSU and provided access to a, uh, to a university degree. Uh, and I've got to think that, you know, as we move forward uh, five, ten years from now, we're going to be shocked and amazed at the type of opportunities we're able to provide to, to students. And a lot of that comes from you. I mean, many of the, the innovations and improvements that we've made over the course of the years have, have been recommendations of students about how they could connect to their faculty, how they could connect to other students, um, how they could get more involved. Uh, in WSU, and as the technologies uh, uh, evolved to allow for those things, we were able to do things that were unthinkable uh, back uh, 20 years ago when we when we when we started this. So, um, yeah, as Kayla mentioned, this is this is your time. This is your opportunity to uh, to uh, ask questions uh, and interact. Uh, we've got an hour scheduled for this, but. Uh, we, we don't necessarily have to go an hour. If, if uh, the questions run out, we're going to stop and not just, just hang out. So um, with that, I, I guess let's, let's start with, uh, with the Q&A, Caitlin. Excellent. Our first question asks, what new undergraduate and graduate programs will WSU be adding, if any? Yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a really poignant question. Um, we, as a university, are talking about uh, a new uh, WSU online initiative. So we are we are looking at the possibility of adding uh, 40 new uh, online degrees over the course of the next seven years. So a very aggressive timeline, uh, opening up access to a number of different types of degrees that we uh, really haven't been we haven't discussed in the past. So I'm very excited about that. We're still in the we're still in the conversation stage, but I do think there are going to be some opportunities where um, you're going to see some undergraduate and graduate degrees uh, come online that, that that you didn't think were possible. So stay tuned for that. Do you anticipate continued growth at WSU and with more students leads to more teachers and staff. How do you expect to deal with this continued growth? Okay, yeah, um, yes, I do. As I mentioned in the in the for for the previous question, uh, we do anticipate a number of new degrees coming online, and with that, we'd have a number a number of new. Uh, students and a number of new faculty who've never taught in an online environment before. But one of the things that I think makes um, Washington State University Global Campus so great is that we use the same faculty, the same curriculum, and offer the same degree as you'd get on any one of our other campuses. So um, in terms of the faculty and staff, we leverage the existing faculty uh, and staff uh, to teach online and on campus. In fact, um, unlike many other programs, the online uh, uh, courses are not overload. They're part of a faculty member's workload. So a, a course is a course is a course. If they may teach one course on Pullman, they may teach one course online. The great thing is that we will make sure that we have the staff and the faculty necessary to support 
um, the students that come into these new degrees because they are WSU faculty and staff. So we will we will make sure that the resources are there to support any student that comes into our global campus. Excellent, thank you, Dave. And we did have a couple comments come in the chat box. Um, regarding the new undergraduate and graduate degrees, one person asks if you can name any specifically, and then um, another person adds a comment that they uh, love WC Global, but they were a little disappointed that there was no English degree available. Okay, so let me, let me uh, navigate that slippery slope. Uh, because this is gonna be published in public, I'm unable to mention a specific degree that we have not uh, run through our accreditors. Um, and so we have to have uh, our accreditors approval uh, before we can announce that we will offer an online degree. Um, I will say that one of the areas we've been talking up to is uh, will remove the that could possibly remove the disappointment of of that student. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. Um, our next question asks, is there anything WSU Global is doing to control increased cost for tuition and other fees for its students or future students? Yeah, um, well, the, the, the opportunity and challenge is that we are the same faculty, the same curriculum and the same degree. So with that, we charge the same tuition. Um, the one thing we have done is we have removed, uh, we've created a, f uh, a flat rate tuition. So there's one tuition rate that all uh, online global campus students pay. Another area that we're exploring very actively and I think has a lot of promise is with open educational resources. And so we're, we're, we're working with departments to think about how we might eliminate textbook costs, especially at the 100, 200 level area, so that um, uh, students who come into a class have access to high quality resources, but they don't have to purchase a textbook. There might be some fees associated with it, with those with those courses, but they wouldn't be at the high rate of, of what you find with many of our um, many of our textbooks. So I hope that answers your question. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. And our next question asks, is there anything or sorry, moving forward, what will be your biggest priority in increasing student involvement with students of the global campus. In other words, how do you plan to increase involvement? Yeah, I, I think that's one of our biggest opportunities moving forward, especially as technology begins to improve. And the, and we we begin to see different types of students coming to our to our global campus that expect that interaction. You know, if you think you think about the world we live in, you know, we bank, we shop, we date uh, on, online and all of those all of those um, things provide opportunities for that interaction. And so I do think that um, I, I do think that we have an opportunity to create an environment where students are connected, whether they're on a physical campus or a virtual campus, and connect with faculty outside of the classroom, students outside of the classroom around common interests. And right now we have two primary mechanisms that uh, allow students to connect or create activities for students to connect. One is our is our uh, student government, and they hold a number of events through uh, throughout the year that bring students together to uh, to interact with one another. And the other one is our global campus connections, which is what this uh, town hall is being delivered through. And and, and the connections idea is that we're going to pull students together around common interests, so that it's outside of a classroom, and they might get together to talk about with a faculty member about dream analysis or home brewing or beekeeping and that those bonds will be built around a shared interest and so when they go into classes they 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 might recognize might recognize one another but i will say that that question really is deep in my heart in that i i, I think that really is our biggest opportunity and challenge as we move as we move forward thank you dave um the next question we have is, as new student issues, for example, student equality or student safety, arise on campus given our current political climate, as we get deeper into the semester, do you anticipate having any similar matters of concern in the global campus? If so, how do you plan to address such issues being that we are on a digital format? Yeah, that does that does present um, a, a difference. I wouldn't say a challenge or an opportunity, but the, it is a different way of communicating. But but I would say that the 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 um, potential 
uh, exists in, in, our, in, our life to, in our digital life today. Um, student safety, student equality are, are core to our values as a, as a university. And the, the great thing is we, we partner with the Office of Student Affairs uh, and Equity and Diversity to make sure that we have the right support uh, infrastructure in place for any situation that arises. So we are part of Washington State University and that support infrastructure that comes with the university is also available to all global campus students. Excellent, Dave. Thank you so much. And um, we did have a couple items come up in the chat box around um, physical versus digital items. And one person asks, can we still have a planner which has a global campus logo on it? I can't get it this year on at um, I can't get one this year and cannot find one at the bookie. And we had a little conversation about the digital copies of things is my biggest pet peeve of online courses. I would prefer hard copies I can highlight and refer back to easily. So those are just a couple comments from some students mm -hmm. in the chat box. Yeah, that's 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 interesting to hear. Um, not uncommon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's you know that's I think that's the part, that's, that's part of the challenge of operating uh, a, a, a digital uh, campus. Uh, the expectations are so diverse. Um, it just from the types of technologies it, to be used to the type of resources that we deliver to the type of experiences. Um, and so trying to find that balance between, um, you know, creating a, a unique uh, uh, experience for all students uh, or a common experience for all students. So always, always interested in hearing the, the expectations uh, and preferences of, of our students to see what we can do to accommodate those. Thank you, Dave. Our next question asks, <coughs> the thing still missing from Global Campus, in my opinion, is the ability to communicate with other students outside the classroom discussion boards. Are there any plans to bridge this gap? Yeah, well, as I mentioned in my previous answer to the previous previous question, we we are we are actively uh, exploring engaging in student involvement, student engagement. Um, I I would point to um, uh, Dr. Lee Daffin in psychology as a as an example. Uh, Dr. Daffin's put together a blackboard. Uh, out of course space that all psychology students have access to where the topics range from career path uh, direction to graduate school um, uh, application to all things psychology. And so it's outside of the classroom. Uh, Dr. Daffin monitors it, but students uh, uh, populate it and that conversation is pretty robust. And we're using Dr. Daffin as a, as a model to help other degree programs understand what's possible and what's expected by our students to communicate and engage and interact outside of a, uh, their online classroom. Thank you, Dave. And we did have a, a comment in the chat box that says, just for the sake of input, um, I love the idea of adding in more traditional degree programs and not just technical programs, though I do see the merit of technical programs. Yeah, well, I, I would say that uh, I can say that the suite of degrees we're looking at spans the, the spectrum of technical to um, uh, liberal arts uh, degrees. Thank you, Dave. And our next question asks about the TESL certificate. And has WSU considered, um, and WSU Global specifically, considered offering the TESL certificate um, with the increased potential interest in the certificate, as well as are there any type of scholarships available for non-degree seeking students who are eligible for this certificate? Okay, two part question. No, we have not explored that, but that's a wonderful idea. Um, what what I will do after this is uh, connect with uh, I believe that I believe that certificates offered out of uh, the English department uh, and see what see what the opportunities are. I, I really like I, I'm going to take that as a suggestion rather than a question. So thank you for that. Uh, and I'm not familiar with scholarships available to non degree seeking students. I know scholarships are available to our students who've declared a major and declared a campus. But I can I can look further into that as well to see if if uh, I'm incorrect in that assumption. Excellent, thank you, Dave. Um, sure. 
And we have a comment from Michelle who says, I love how much Global Campus has evolved in efficiency in the last two years. When I began, I had a difficult time finding pertinent information and resources, but it has really grown. Oh, fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. And, and, and with that, <coughs> I'm I'm interested to hear from from you all if if you have if there's any other questions or other any other comments and and if if not here um, at other times uh, the, send, send me an email let me know what you think might improve that experience for students let me know what you think might improve um, the the global campus in general and in terms of uh, if, while you're thinking about that in terms of evolving you know I I was I was here in the early days of what was called the distance degree program, which was the precursor to the global campus. And that experience was profoundly different than, than what you all get to experience. So uh, in the past, uh, when we started, we, did, we developed study packs that were hard copy and we had VHS lectures and we would mail those out, hard, hard copy mail out to students and the students would have uh, questions at the back of each lesson that they would write out and they'd put in a pre-stamped envelope and they'd mail that back to the distance degree program and staff there at DDP would open up that envelope, um, find what faculty member was teaching that course, put it in a uh, in an uh, envelope, sent it off to the faculty member. The faculty member would mark it up with questions, comments, send it back to DDP and then DDP would send it back to the students who may have had to make alterations and repeat that process all over again or go on to the next lesson. So uh, you can see as a, it was, it was great that we extended that access to that degree, but that level of engagement and interaction uh, was, was very challenging and non-existent almost. And now you think about the opportunities that we have today. It's amazing. To, to see where we've evolved to. And like I said earlier in this, in this uh, town hall, boy, I can't wait to see where the next five years takes us, where the next 10 years takes us. I, I think there's gonna be some really exciting opportunities there. Excellent, thank you so much, Dave. And we do have another question that came into the chat. It says, I am a humanities degree with, or I'm pursuing a humanities degree with concentrations in English and history. One issue I've encountered is a limited number of classes available online for English. My class choices are very limited and most of the classes I wish to take are not available online. Will more classes be available online in the future? I believe so. I, I believe as we begin to um, open up new degree opportunities and if the scope is, is as big as I expect it to be, I imagine that the, the course opportunity, the course options are going to improve and increase just like the degrees. I'm optimistic that that will be the case. Thank you. And we have a question of, do you anticipate adding more graduate programs too? Most definitely. Excellent. Um, and we'll wait a few more moments to see if any other questions or comments come up in the chat. Otherwise, we will start wrapping it up for this evening. I want to thank you all so much for coming out tonight. And if you have any additional questions or comments, please do let us know at global.connections at wcu.edu. And our next program is tomorrow evening. It's the Carson Career Info Session with Marriott International. And that is a live stream presentation and that will begin at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you're interested in that, please register at connections.wcu.edu. Dave, thank you so much for your time this evening, and I hope everyone has a great night. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin, and thank you all for attending. Um, hope to talk to you soon. Have a great evening, and go Cougs.